One of our challenges uh, for our kids, especially after congenital heart disease surgery, is that they develop low cardiac output syndrome. And it's the leading cause of mortality after, uh, after surgery. And unfortunately, a lot of the technologies for cardiac output monitoring are made for adults. Um, you know, they're not small enough to fit in, you know, neonates and things like that. And so um, listening to the presentations by companies and researchers about the technologies, I'm always trying to think, how can this solve a clinical need that we have? When you're innovative or you're, you have an idea and you're, you're bringing something to the commercial marketplace, you need to find your tribe. And when we came to AI Med, we felt that we had found our tribe. Here was a group of people who understood what we were doing. They understood the need for remote physiology monitoring. And so it's almost like coming home a little bit. So you, you found, you found your, your family of people who truly understand your mission and your passion and why you're doing what you're doing. Low cardiac output syndrome is hard to detect. There's a lot of uncertainty about whether people are in it because we can't really measure cardiac output. And most of the ways that we do that right now are late features, right? So there's decreased cardiac output, decreased oxygen delivery to the tissue, <clears throat> and then you get organ damage, right? Acute kidney injury uh, or a need for ECMO, which is, um, you know, heart-lung machine support or things like that. But those are late signs. So really what you're seeing are the consequences of low cardiac output syndrome. So the goal of these projects uh, that we're working on um, is to say, how do we find the physiologic changes that are happening in this patient before they cause end organ damage, right? So we can react to it sooner rather than wait until their kidneys get a ding or their liver gets a ding or their, you know, uh, heart gets a ding. And then we respond to it. So. We're developing technology that is an early detector of low cardiac output syndrome. Mimosa is uniquely positioned to do that because it never has to touch the baby. So one of the problems you have with the babies, you don't have surface area. So you can't attach things to them. So we're creating the first non-invasive tool to assess the extremity health of these little babies in the ICU. So Mimosa is a class two medical device that non-invasively measures your skin health. It looks at things like tissue oximetry, uh, temperature, and other biomarkers that are predictive of what might happen downstream. If we have a specific need that we need to find, how do we fix it? And um, I th that's where I met Dr. Cross, who had been talking about her startup company, Mimosa, and what it was doing in terms of perfusion imaging. So using a camera that can look at the perfusion in the skin. And I thought, you know, uh, low cardiac output syndrome, that's really a, a problem of sufficient cardiac output. Let's see if we can figure out if her technology would help us monitor perfusion uh, in these kids after surgery. And so that's what we've been working on. Uh, but we're pretty close to getting the project started in reality where we can uh, monitor kids after surgery, collect the appropriate data, and then also use her technology and see if, that, um, if that'll be a good way for us to, um, to monitor kids after surgery. I think that you can meet people that maybe can help you within your own company, so data scientists or engineers, to the business acumen and expertise that you need to scale and grow your companies. We've had great value from this conference at, at all levels and all bases in the company, both scientifically as well as from the business acumen. One of, I think, our greatest relationships uh, is meeting Dr. Ashu Tandon, who currently right now is at the Cleveland Clinic. And at that time when we came here, we were really focused on the diabetic lower extremity and all of our work was being performed in the vascular compromise of the leg. But here's this very creative and innovative um, person who comes and says, I think this could be used for babies. And it's like, well, I'm an adult plastic surgeon. <laughs> I have very limited experience in pediatrics. Like, I don't know, like, you have to tell me about this problem. And, and do you think we can really solve this for you? He goes, I think you can. And I think your device, because it's portable, and it gives novel insights into these, into skin health. We don't have anything like this in pediatrics. Maybe we could work together and you could create something uh, for the ICU environment. And it was really through those early conversations and that we said, okay, I think this is the right thing to do because if you can save babies, then you should probably save some babies. 
And so we've been working with uh, Dr. Tannen now for a few years and finally came up with a device that he could use in his intensive care. Even if you have the best technology, until it becomes a product, and that product can be bought and used by clinicians to actually solve the clinical problem, we haven't, we haven't solved the problem, right? The, the patients are still not able to access the technology. It's not deployed in a way that it fixes our problem. I'm not doing research just to get the next grant. I'm doing the research so that we affect patient care and patient outcomes. And so getting to that other stage where we finally get the product to the use case is really, you know, to the patient. That's what I think uh, really needs to happen. Wouldn't it be great to tell a parent, well, because of the modes of technology, we were able to pick up this condition. We are able to save your child and you get to bring your child home. And then now you're not only just saying that in one ICU, but you're saying in all pediatric ICUs across the world. And you're doing it not just for one type of child, but all children. And I think that's the value proposition for this relationship with Dr. Tandon is we're probably going to change the world. In fact, we're going to change the world uh, for in this particular area of medicine.